Let's start with an integral domain. And remember, that means that it doesn't have any zero divisors. That will create the polynomial ring based on that integral domain. And again, remember that if we start with an integral domain and create a polynomial ring, that's also an integral domain. And let's take a polynomial in there that's not a zero to polynomial and not a unit. So that means it doesn't have a multiplicative inverse. We'll say that it's irreducible over that whenever we can factor it into the product of two things, one of those two things has to be a unit. If we can't do that, or if there is a way to break it down, then we'll say it's called reducible. Now, one of the things that's not completely intuitive about this is that what the integral domain is makes a huge difference. And there's some very unintuitive things that can happen here. So for example, let's look at 3x squared plus 12. Now that's a polynomial in many, many different polynomial rings. So let's take a look at it in a few of them. Let's start by looking at it in zx. That thing is reducible. Because I can factor this thing as 3 times x squared plus 4. And even though that's just a constant, 3 is not a unit in z, in zx actually because 3 doesn't have a multiplicative inverse. So we've reduced it in what's in zx a non-trivial way. However, even though it factors the same way in qx, I can still say that's 3 times x squared plus 4, but now 3 is a unit. 3 has a multiplicative inverse in qx. So because that has a multiplicative inverse, this is sort of a trivial way of factoring it in qx. So in this case, it's irreducible. But then it gets even weirder, because now, what if I look at it in cx? Now, pulling out just a 3, 3 does have a multiplicative inverse in cx, but this part can break down further. And those don't have multiplicative inverses. So it's reducible here. Again, what the integral domain is that you're working over is incredibly important. Even though z is included in q, q is included in c, we get this weird thing where it's reducible in zx, irreducible in qx, and reducible again in cx. It all depends on what the integral domain we're working with is. Let's look at another example here. Let's say I've got x squared plus 1. This is irreducible over z3x. Now showing that is kind of hard to do. In fact, in general, showing something's irreducible is kind of challenging. But we'll find out a better way to do this here in a minute. But it's reducible over z5x. Why is that? Because that actually factors as x plus 2 times x plus 3. Why is that? Because if I FOIL this thing out, I've got x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 6, but all these things are mod 5. So 
when I do 3x plus 2x, 5x becomes 0, and 6 becomes plus 1. Now, a couple of things I said here. I said this was irreducible over z3x, and I said this was irreducible in qx. Why is that? I mean, I kind of it's easy to see when something's reducible because you can just show the factorization. But how do you prove that there's no other way to factor it? In the case that we're working with a field, again, which is stronger than an integral domain, we take a polynomial in that. And if the degree of that polynomial is 2 or 3, then the only way it can be reducible is if it has a 0 in the field. Why is that? Well, because it's an if and only if statement, there's two directions. So let's suppose, first of all, do the easy one. Let's suppose f of x has a 0 in f and call it a. So that means f of a equals 0. But based on some of those consequences of the division algorithm, that means that x minus a is a factor. And that certainly, that can't be a, a unit. And so there we go. We know that this thing, our f of x, has to equal x minus a times something else. Because the degree is 2 or 3, this thing has to have degree 1 or 2. And we've got a non-trivial way. Neither one of these things can be a unit. So let's try the other way. Suppose f of x is reducible. So that means that we can write f of x equals some uh, g of x times h of x. And these things can't be units. Now, let's think about this. Because we're working over a field, these things can't be just numbers, can't be just field elements. If they were just elements of f, they'd have multiplicative inverses because that's what a field means. So it must be the degree of each of these things is at least 1. But because the degree of f of x is 2 or 3, one of them has to, at least one of them has to be degree 1. If f of x was degree 2, we'd have degree 1 and a degree 1. If f of x was degree 3, the only way would be one of these is degree 1, the other is degree 2. But either way, one of these things is degree 1. Without loss of generality, let's assume that g of x has degree 1. Now, being degree 1 means that g of x would have to be some kind of an ax plus b, where a and b are in my field. But there has to be a field element that makes this 0. Notably, that if I say x is equal to a inverse b, and the additive inverse of that, I have a times negative a inverse b plus b. It's something we've looked at before that this additive inverse bit can kind of be pulled out. So I've got negative a, a inverse b 
plus b. Negative b plus b is 0. So there we go. That thing has to have a 0.